So in the previous video, we discussed about damped oscillation and we said the differential equation is d square x upon dt square plus 2 beta dx by dt plus omega naught square x is 0. Okay, so for this particular differential equation, we consider considered a generalized uh, solution, a general solution for this and we said x can be written as a e to the power alpha t then we found dx upon dt and then we got d square x by dt square and so we substituted we got a quadratic equation we got a quadratic equation then we solved the quadratic equation and got the values of alpha 1 and per 2 to values of alphas and we substituted so the final generalized solution for uh, the damped oscillation was found to be e to the power minus beta t multiplied with a1 some arbitrary constant e to the power um, that alpha 1 was found to be beta square minus omega naught square t and plus a2 another arbitrary constant e to the power minus square root under beta square minus omega naught square t this was the generalized solution so we said what will happen if beta square uh, is less than omega naught square and we said if the damping coefficient is less than the natural angular frequency we discussed under damped condition or under damping in the previous video then the second case we said what will happen if beta square is greater than omega naught square where the damping coefficient is greater than the natural angular frequency and we said this is over damping where the damping coefficient is larger and the third case we said what will happen if beta square equals to omega naught square where the damping coefficient matches with the natural angular frequency of the object or the oscillator so this is called the critical damping critical damping okay the first case under damping we had already discussed in detail now we will discuss the over damping and the critical so the second case where we considered beta square is greater than omega naught square then our generalized solution that we wrote xt equals to e to the power minus beta t within the bracket we have a1 now this is beta square minus omega naught square under square root t plus a2 e to the power this is e to the power a2 e to the power minus of square root under beta square minus omega naught square t so now if you will take beta square minus omega naught square we will get something a positive quantity let's consider this to be alpha square so that i can write beta square minus omega naught square square root is some value alpha let's substitute it so xt can be now written as e to the power beta t and this is a1 e to the power alpha t plus alpha t plus a2 some arbitrary constant e to the power minus alpha t now if you'll see the general solution here both e to the power alpha t and e to the power alpha t here and e to the power minus alpha t here are non-oscillatory functions non-oscillatory functions non-oscillatory functions so clearly e to the power minus beta t is the damping factor which is there um, which is multiplied with a non-oscillatory function e to the power alpha t e to the power minus alpha t depending upon the values of alpha beta uh, a1 a2 you will get uh, multiple uh, multiple um, uh, uh, nature of the displacement time graph okay so one of the uh, one of the different uh, nature of displacement time graph i am showing here which is basically a decaying graph but with a larger you know, slope here you can see so this is one so of course it shows a non oscillatory functions so so if you will if you will try to give an example i mean uh, if you want to relate it to some real life situation then we can say uh, the oscillation of a simple harmonic uh, oscillation of oscillation of a simple pendulum of a simple pendulum pendulum in a highly viscous liquid in a highly viscous fluid or viscous liquid highly viscous fluid so in this case your damping coefficient will be much greater than the 
natural angular frequency of the oscillator so this gives you the case of over damping z so this gives you the case of over damping over damping this gives you the case of over damping now what is critical damping? in the third case we said the critical damping is beta square equals to omega naught square where the damping coefficient matches with the natural angular frequency of the oscillator so we we got beta square minus omega naught square is zero so of course the square root under beta square minus omega naught square will also be zero so our general solution can now be written as e to the power minus beta t the damping factor multiplied with a1 e to the power alpha t whatever was inside beta square so this gives you e to the power zero that is one plus a2 and e to the power zero minus beta square minus omega naught square square root is also uh, e to the power zero that is one so we can write some constant multiplied with e to the power minus beta t as the solution for critical damping so this clearly gives you that exponential decay so if you will plot the time versus displacement displacement versus time then from a certain value you got um, it's exponential decay this gives you exponential decay of the amplitude but the time taken here will be very short as compared to the die out in the um, under damping case and also the over damping case so here the time taken to come back to the equilibrium position is very less so that's 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 why you know in practice i mean in practice when when we are talking about critical critically damped condition or critical damping the dead bit galvanometer dead bit galvanometer or ballistic galvanometer and uh, shock observers in vehicles are adjusted for critical damping so whenever uh, there is a there is a there is a shift of the object there is uh, i mean in case of vehicles if there is a jerk then the then the object uh, then the object will go uh, i mean uh, will be disturbed and move up or down and within no time it it should come back to the equilibrium position so that it is ready for the further ready for the for the other jerk so that you know the rider will not feel um, the jerk so dead bit galvanometer also when the current is cut up suddenly it has to come back to the zero uh, to the main position to the equilibrium position so these these you know this kind of you know uh, materials or instruments need to be um, need to be um, kept in uh, critical damping condition so that the equilibrium position can be achieved within no time or within very short time thank you